Hi everyone, thanks a lot for joining this session, Threat Hunting in Microsoft 365 Environment. I'm Thiru, I'm a city manager in Mandian Consulting, predominantly supporting customers to respond and remediate to major security breaches and to proactively assess the security posture of their cloud and identity environment. In today's session, we'll be talking about some of the adversarial techniques observed in Microsoft 365 environment and how to hunt these techniques. I'm going to take a pass for a while. I'm going to let my co-speaker Anurag to introduce himself and continue the talk. Thanks, Thiru. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Anurag. I'm a manager with CrowdStrike Incident Response Team here in Asia Pacific. Uh, I work with a lot of organizations when they are uh, battling threat actors, when they are responding to breaches. I'm also an instructor with the Science Institute, and I've spoken at several uh, conferences before. And as Thiru said, we're going to today talk about M365 or Microsoft 365 services. Uh, we're going to look at how threat actors target Microsoft 365. Uh, we'll talk through how defenders can hunt for these attackers techniques, which we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll look, we're going to look at multiple ways of doing this threat hunting. Uh, we will look at how defenders can look at configuration as well as how defenders can look at logs to identify if these activities are happening in the environment. Uh, the question that comes up is why talk about a software as a service platform and then talk about threat hunting in a software as a service platform. Now, Microsoft 365 is not any common SaaS platform. Uh, it is a productivity platform, which is widely used, uh, probably the most common software as a service solution across the globe. A lot of organizations use it. Uh, they use it for very critical purposes. They use it to communicate, they use it to store files, uh, to share files. So there are a lot of these services which M365 comes with. Uh, we are talking about Exchange Online, Teams, Power Automate, also known as Flows, uh, OneDrive, SharePoint Online, and several of these. Uh, that makes M365 a very lucrative target for threat actors, which obviously makes it very important for us <clears throat> defenders to be able to understand this. Uh, understand how M365 works, understand how threat actors target M365, and then to be able to hunt for techniques of threat actors across the environment. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Which TTPs are, are we going to talk about? As I talked about, M365 is huge, it's complex, uh, it's used in a lot of different ways. So there are multiple ways how threat actors target this platform. Uh, we have picked up certain techniques which we have seen threat actors use in the wild uh, and put those together for sharing it with community and see how these techniques work. And then we'll talk about how hunting can be done looking for these te techniques in uh, uh, M365 tenant. Uh, the way we have structured this talk is we're gonna pick up one technique. We'll talk how this technique works and what is the purpose of this technique. How, what are the threat actor ways of implementing this. So can they use PowerShell? They can use graphical user interface. And then we'll look at how defenders can hunt it through configuration as well as logging. So Carlos pointed out to UAL log. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about AAL log. Uh, it is important for defenders to understand both ways of doing threat hunting. Uh, so not only get stuck with configuration-based threat hunting, but also be able to do log-based threat hunting. They are kind of complementary to each other. Uh, you cannot do log-based threat hunting uh, unless you have turned them on, which a lot of organizations don't do that. So it's important and critical to understand both ways of doing hunting. Uh, we'll start talking about Exchange Online Service. Exchange is one of the most commonly used service uh, from M365 platform. Uh, we'll look at that. Then we'll look at Microsoft Flows, also known as Power Automate. Uh, that is the automation platform in M365, the automation application. We'll see how attackers can use that and misuse those. Uh, then Thiru will talk about persistent privileged role, uh, illicit OAuth grants, another very big problem with M365 applications. Uh, we'll touch upon SharePoint Online, how threat actors can target that. And we'll look at some ways of how threat actors can have persistent access to M365 applications. And then we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, we have a summary slide in the end, which everyone can take away with them. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. do. Uh, one thing here is uh, we we are in a lot of these tactics and techniques which we're going to talk about, assuming that the threat actor has already gained access to the environment. 
Uh, that access could have been gained by sometimes just guessing passwords, sometimes doing credential stuffing, uh, finding ways of bypassing MFA, which we're going to touch upon in one uh, in some of the techniques which we're going to talk about. Uh, but often it is not that difficult for a threat actor to get the first level of access in the environment, uh, often even global uh, admin access, which we have seen in a lot of cases, uh, which we have seen in a lot of public uh, documentation that has come out. So let's get started and start talk start talking about Exchange Online Service. Uh, that's the Outlook.com. This is the email service which a lot of people use. Uh, the uh, the workhorse of a lot of organizations. Uh, and we're going to talk about a few things here. We'll talk about how email forwarding is a very big problem which threat actors abuse so that they can continuously have access to an environment. Uh, they can perform exfiltration continuously. So we'll talk a number of ways of how email forwarding can be set up. Then we'll look at two, another, two other ways of how permissions can be granted to inbox specific folders and how that probably can be misused by a lot of threat actors. So let's start uh, talking through the first part, which is automated email forwarding, which is probably the biggest problem in M365, which a lot of organizations are dealing with. Now, be it your nation state protectors, the, the Apex predator, uh, or be it your business email compromise and e-crime protectors, both of these different protectors, they often use email forwarding, uh, sometimes to continuously gain access, as I said, and do exfiltration, and sometimes just to focus on those accounting related emails that come in so that they can use that information and uh, can commit an email fraud. So this is a big problem with a lot of organizations are facing. The challenge here being that uh, it's not only one way how this can be configured. So there are multiple ways how automated email forwarding can be configured in an M365 environment. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of those ways. So we'll talk about mailbox email forwarding. Then we'll talk about inbox rules. We'll talk about transport rules. And later in our discussion, we'll also look at how Microsoft Flows, uh, also known as Power, Power Automate can be used to set up uh, these email forwarding. So it's a, it's a very novel way of doing that, uh, probably more difficult to detect because a lot of people are not looking at that. So let's start uh, first talking about uh, mailbox email forwarding. So in mailbox email forwarding, uh, email forwarding can be configured as part of the user mailbox setting. So on the right hand side, here you see how this can be configured in a graphical user interface uh, where an attribute called forward SMTP address is being configured. So there are two ways how mailbox email forwarding can be configured uh, using an attribute called forwarding SMTP address and the other one using forwarding address. Now, in case of forwarding SMTP address, it is important that the object to which the forwarding is being configured, the object has a mail enabled uh, object is uh, a it can be an external object. So it doesn't have to be an internal object. Uh, whereas in case of forwarding address, it needs to be an internal mailbox attribute. So typically, uh, if you look at this, uh, forwarding address would typically be used for internal emails, whereas forwarding SMTP address can be used for external emails also, uh, depending on where the mail enabled object exists in your Active Directory. So two different ways of how uh, object attributes can be used to set up email forwarding. The way a threat actor can do this using PowerShell uh, is use the set mailbox command, uh, PowerShell commandlet, where they can put an identity for which they want to forward email. Uh, like here, we are showing victim as the victim identity, and then they can set a forwarding SMTP address to an email address which they control. Once this has been set up, the emails would then be forwarded to the threat actor controlled email address, uh, which in this case is attacker at threatactor.dev. That's the structure we're gonna follow. So we will talk about uh, the threat actor technique first, like I'm doing right now. And then we let's talk about how defenders can hunt for these. Uh, first as part of configuration, as I said, it's important for us as defenders to understand how threat hunting can be done with the configuration information, not only the logs part of it. So here uh, we are showing a PowerShell commandlet, get mailbox. So what this does is it gets all the mailboxes configured in M365, and then it looks for objects where 
forwarding SMTP address has been set. So it would give you a list of all the email boxes, mailboxes where forwarding SMTP address has been set. And you can do the similar thing for forwarding address also. What we need to look at here is typically uh, email addresses which are external, email addresses which do not belong to the same user for which the mailbox is, uh, and something which may not be approved as part of the business. So that's how you look at this configuration. Uh, it does require some manual effort to go through this, uh, but that's a way of doing it based on the configuration that is available. Carlos touched upon Unified Audit Log, UAL, is the workhorse logging platform in M365. Uh, it includes user logs, it includes admin logs, and it includes a lot of different logging. Uh, what you can do as Defender is go through these UAL logs and look for specific set mailbox operations. Now, what we showed was the threat actor using set mailbox operation. And here we are searching through the UAL log for any usage of set mailbox for specific start date and end date. And if there is a parameter for forwarding SMTP address, uh, that'll come up and we are searching for that. Now, one thing to keep in mind uh, for a lot of these techniques which we are talking about is to understand that threat actors can use variations of these. So while we are giving one example of this is how you can search for this, but that doesn't mean that it will work for all the different variations which a threat actor may use. So it's always good to be innovative and think about different ways how threat actors are using these same commandlets or sometimes different commandlets also. So something to keep in mind. This is how the output of that search command which we showed for UAL will look like. Uh, here, the important part is to look at the operation. So that is the set mailbox operation and the forwarding SMTP address. So here a forwarding SMTP address value has been set for attacker at the rate protector.dev. One important thing to pick up here is this workload field here in line eight, which you see that workload says exchange. So workload is the application in M365, which is generating this UAL log, uh, which we are looking at. That was mailbox rules. Now let's look at inbox rules, how inbox rules can be set up by a threat actor to perform email forwarding. A uh, standard difference between inbox rules is that inbox rules trigger once an email lands in an inbox. So it is often used by a lot of users to move emails around in different folders, uh, depending on what project that email belongs to or what user that email comes uh, from. So based on that, a lot of users use this inbox rules. Uh, what, the threat, what a threat actor can do is use the same sort of inbox rules, but this time, instead of moving it into a folder, they can just start copying those emails out to a attacker controlled email address. Uh, on the right side, you see how this can be configured in a graphical user interface. So you can add a condition. First, you provide the name. Here we are providing malicious underscore forward. Obviously, that's probably not what a threat actor would want to use. They want to use something which is a little more difficult to identify. And then you add a condition. So this is a trigger which will trigger that inbox rule. Uh, here we are showing apply to all the messages that come in. And once that message hits the inbox, just forward it to the attacker controlled email address. Uh, that's the step two here. Uh, this is this can be configured in GUI. It can also be configured using PowerShell. So new inbox rule is the commandlet that a threat actor can use and create a forwarding in uh, inbox rule in the environment to forward the emails that come to that inbox. Hunting this. So in case of configuration, what we suggest is you look for all the mailboxes and for each mailbox, you look for in the inbox rules that have been configured. Now, if we start doing this for all the inbox rules, that's gonna be painful because as I said, a lot of users use it. So it's gonna be a big result of all the inbox rules in the environment. What you can focus on is things like forward to, redirect to, and forward as attachment to. These are the typical settings which are used by attackers to make sure that the email gets forwarded to them. So this might help to focus on only specific inbox rules rather than looking, looking at everything which might be configured in your environment. Uh, another tip here is to use this include hidden flag. Uh, what this helps is when you give this, you can look at any hidden inbox rules that might have been configured in the environment. So something to keep in mind. When it comes to logs, 
in the UAL, which is the unified audit log, you can perform a search going through the unified audit log, looking at the operations. We are looking at new inbox rule as well as set inbox rule here. Like I said, it often pays to be innovative and think about different ways how threat actors can use this. And then we are going through the data, looking for forward to, redirect to, and forward as attachment to. So again, how threat actors set these rules up. Once you do the search and if you get a hit, this is how a result will look like. Operation is new inbox rule. And what we are focusing on is that forward to field. So forward to field here is attacker at threatactor.dev. If that is not something which has been configured by the user, it's not a user email, it's an external email, that's some, those are some red flags that should light up uh, if you see an output like this. So that was the second way. Now, there's another way. So as I said, there are multiple ways of how these can be configured. And that's what makes it tricky sometimes to look for all these different rules that are configured. Here we are looking at transport rules, also known as mail flow rules. And as the name says, these get triggered while a message is in transit. So this has a richer set of conditions. It can do a lot of more different stuff, but it also requires an admin access to exchange. So an exchange admin access is typically required, a privilege access is required. But once the detector has that, they can set up these malicious forwarding rules where they can copy their email address to everything or BCC their email address, making sure that they have continuous access to whatever messages or emails are coming to an inbox. So here's an example of PowerShell command let new transport rule being used by a threat actor to set up a malicious forward mail with a higher priority and making it enabled. And every email that comes to victim at threat hunting here would be blind copy to or BCC to attacker at threatactor.com, making the threat actor, giving the threat actor capability ability to look at all the emails that these you, this user receives. Hunting this through configuration would mean you're looking at all the transport rules. Again, there might be a lot of transport rules, but you can focus only on things like blind copy to, copy to and other things which you can go through. Uh, again, you know, just, just being innovative helps when you're doing hunting. Looking at logs, there are two different logs which can be used as this is an admin or a privileged operation. You can look at admin audit log or AEL logs, where you are looking for new transport rule and set transport rule usage, as well as you can go through the UAL or unified audit log, uh, looking for new transport rule and set transport rule operations. We have put a lot of code and a lot of stuff in the slides because we would like this to be used as a reference if need be. So you can just take this away, uh, look at this code and use that uh, instead of me going through each of the commandments. So that's the reason we have tried to put a lot of code and you know some of these slides really, really look busy. Let's look at the output. So if you have a hit, this is how a hit will look like. So operation is new transport rule. And the name blind copy to has been set to attacker at threatector.com. So any email that is coming through is being blind copied to, to attacker at threatector.com here. So that was all our different kind of inbox rules, transport rules and mailbox rules, which could be configured. We're gonna talk about the flow or uh, Microsoft Power Automate, uh, but I'm gonna do that a little later. Let's talk about two different ways of how a threat actor who has hacks, had access in your environment can just set themselves up to be able to access an inbox. Uh, again, these are things which are typically used by the users, by system administrators, but they can be abused by threat actors like a lot of different things which we see when we perform threat hunting. Uh, the first one is delegation settings. Now, delegation settings are a very commonly used things in an enterprise environment. Often you will see executive assistants, they require access to an executive's mailbox. That's where that mailbox delegation settings come into picture. There are two specific delegation settings which we are interested in here. Uh, one is called full access and the other one is called send as. Why two? I'll come to that in a second. When you Think about full access, it appears you get all the access, right? But, but what happens here is when full access is provided, it just allows the delegate to open the mailbox and view and delete emails. So you are able to manage the mailbox and read the emails. You see something missing there? You cannot send the emails. That's where send as delegation setting comes into picture. 
So between full as full access and send as, you get full access to the inbox and you can read emails, view emails, delete emails and send emails and pretend to be that uh, owner of that inbox. Uh, these are PowerShell snippets of how these can be configured by a threat actor. So just adding mailbox permission here and giving access rights at full access and adding recipient permission here and giving uh, access rights at send as. This would only work out for a threat actor if threat actor has somehow gained access to the environment and has access to another inbox. Uh, or if it's a malicious insider. So once they have that, they can provide themselves these settings and then keep access to over these uh, mailboxes. This is how we can, as defenders, look for these misconfigurations or attacker TTPs. Uh, here we are reviewing all the mailboxes which have full access permission configured in Exchange Online settings. Here we are looking at logs. Uh, we can look for search we can search through admin audit logs, looking for add mailbox permission. That's what we were using earlier. Uh, and we can also look through the UAL log, looking for any usage of this specific commandlets uh, and the values of pull access as the audit data parameters that have been configured. This is how a hit will look like. What we are looking for is access right as full access and the operation is add mailbox permission. Do remember when you run some of these, you will see a lot of different logs. So it might need some effort to uh, narrow down on what is of interest or sometimes you would need to export these into a analytics platform where you can then run these searches. So that was for full access. Similar things can be done for send as, as I said, you need full access as well as send as. Send as provides an attacker capability to send email as uh, a victim. So that's what we are doing here. We are reviewing all the mailboxes and looking for access rights. Uh, and we are also looking for admin audit logs. UAL, in the UAL, you can run the same power, PowerShell commandlets looking for send as rights that have been assigned. So that's another way of doing uh, hunting for this. And this is how a hit will look like if you see access rights as send as. This takes me to mailbox folder permissions. So uh, I'll talk through this and then I'll hand it over to uh, Thiru. Here, instead of providing full access to the entire mailbox, you can provide access to specific folders. Now this is often used where people uh, provide access to their calendars to everyone across organization. Uh, you can do that for inboxes. You can do that for specific folders. Uh, that's what a threat actor can do. Uh, there are two special user types here, anonymous and default. That's what are typically misused. Anonymous means anyone, unauthenticated users, anyone external, whereas default means anyone internal. So here, what you see on the right side is for inbox, the permission of the inbox for the default user has been set up as owner, which means anyone internal can access this. This can be done using a PowerShell commandlet also, where the threat actor is now changing what kind of permission anonymous or default has on a specific folder, uh, depending on what kind of access they have. So if they make it anonymous, has full access, then even outside of an organization, they would be able to access the folder they have provided permission to. This is how we can hunt for this. So here we are running get mailbox, looking at all the mailbox folder permission and looking for anonymous as well as default, uh, wherever access rights have been set. We can review the default user as well as anonymous user also here. That's what we are doing, uh, looking through the configuration again. And this is the UAL hunt, which we can do looking, look for mailbox folder permission commandlet usage. Again, looking for anonymous as well as default, having some sort of permission on a folder. This is how a successful hunt will look like. So what you're looking for is user as default and access rights as something other than nothing. So you know here it is owner. This is suspicious. So that means uh, access rights have been changed for the user default uh, as the owner here. Let's talk about Microsoft Flows. Uh, Microsoft Flows is a very, very interesting application in M365. Uh, it's also known as Power Automate. Uh, it's used to perform automation. So you can do several different things. Uh, you can set up rules where you get an email which has a file and that file is automatically copied in the OneDrive. 
uh, you can power automate or you can automate stuff by writing all these different rules or of uh, what needs to be done. The way these rules are written is there is a trigger. So here you see a trigger on the right side. Uh, the trigger we have set here is when a new email arrives. So every time a new email comes in, this rule will be triggered. And what will this rule do? It will forward the email to the threat actor. So here I'm using Microsoft Flow or the threat actor can use a Microsoft Flow as a user. So they just need user permission and they can set up this rule. And every time an email comes in, that email will be forwarded out. This is how you can hunt for this across UAL. So what you can do is search unified audit log, looking for a flow creation. Now, again, this is a lot of results which you will get. You may have to specifically focus on certain new flows that have been created based on time or continuously look for it. The other challenge here is you see this URL that is mentioned here. Uh, even if uh, um, uh, someone, when they click on this, they may not get full access to the flow. So they may have to own the flow or add themselves to the permission. So it's not that straightforward to look at what a flow is doing. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. But when these emails get auto forwarded, there are certain things which you can pick up in those emails to see if this doesn't look right. This looks suspicious, like the client IP address field. So here, this is an email going out. But the client IP address here is set up as Microsoft's IP address. And similarly, on the email messages that are being forward, the XMS mail operation type is forward, where the mail application is Power Automate, which is Microsoft Flow. So some tidbits here and there, you can pick up that this email was probably forwarded. So if you have someone watching this, they can uh, alert on this. Another example of flows being used for data extraction. So not only sending emails, it's a, it's a blank canvas for a threat actor on what they would like to do using flows. Uh, there is a lot of capabilities that are built into flows. So here in this case, whenever a file is created, that's the trigger. Another file is getting created in a storage account which threat actor controls. So when I see a file is getting created in OneDrive, I can create the same file in Dropbox, which I as an attacker control. So this is data extraction, keeping an eye on whatever files are getting created or if a user is creating those files. So this is another very interesting way of how a threat actor can perform data exfiltration. This is how we can perform a hunt for this. Here we are going through the UAL, looking for data extraction. So what we are looking for is this file download operation uh, because another cloud storage is downloading, downloading this file from M365. So that's how you can look for this. Again, these IP addresses depend on what service you are using as a threat actor. Uh, this looks like a lot of code, so I'm not gonna go through this entire code, but what this PowerShell snippet does is it goes through all the different flows that have been configured and gives you details of those flows. So something to see if, something to use if you want to list all the different flows that have been configured. Uh, and then you can hunt through those and see which ones are those not for it, uh, not valid. Uh, this is again performing hunting through configuration. Uh, what we are looking at is output of an auto forwarded email and output of a data extraction flow. So in this flow, you are looking at actions as forwarding email and delete email. So email is being forwarded, it is being deleted, and uh, display name is something which the attacker can configure. So victim is created by is another thing which you can look at. Uh, but that's kind of what it tells you. It tells you the trigger, it tells you the action, not a lot. Uh, again, here, this is the data extraction flow. So if you have a successful threat hunt, this is how the output will look like, which is I'm creating a file on new file that is getting created. So that's how you can do hunting, looking for uh, different flows. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is now hand it over to Thiru uh, and Thiru is gonna talk through some of those other techniques. Uh, over to you, Thiru, if you can change the slides. Uh, Sansim, can you pass on the control to me? Yeah, thank you. Let's move on to the next technique uh, called persistent privileged role. I'm going to talk about an interesting role called application impersonation role. So this is a built-in management role in Exchange Online Services. Any identities with application impersonation role can access the content of any user's mailbox. So typically, this role is assigned to third-party email security solutions or backup products. 
threat actors can abuse this role in order to perform bulk email extraction activities. Either they can target any of the user account that has application impersonation role, or they can uh, assign this role to one of the compromised user account after gaining the exchange admin privileges in order to perform stealthy operations. So this role can be assigned through admin portal, or this can be assigned through PowerShell commandlets. For hunting perspective, you can list out the identities with application impersonation role by querying Exchange Online configurations. We are displaying two sets of queries. The first uh, query you can, you can use in order to list out all the role groups assigned with application impersonation role, and then list out all the identities part of the role group. And the second query will list out the identities that has direct role assignment to the role application impersonation. For hunting, you can query unified audit logs in order to list out application impersonation role assignment activity through the mentioned time date range. Search unified audit log for the operations, new role group, new management role assignment, set management role assignment, and then you can filter out for value application impersonation. So through this way, you can narrow down your hunt. So this is a sample log output where you can see an application impersonation role is assigned to a user called attacker. So through this way, you can hunt this technique. Let's move to the next technique, illicit consent grants. Consent is a process where a user or an administrator can grant authorization to a third party application or an application hosted in the tenant in order to access Microsoft 365 resources such as SharePoint Online or Exchange Online or OneDrive. Once an authorization is granted to an application, a service principle will be registered through which an M3 resource can be accessed. So there are various permissions, application permissions. So these permissions are used by applications without a need for a user to sign into the application. So typically this permission is used when an application need to run in a background or as a demo on. And application permissions can be granted only by administrators. Delegated permissions. So these permissions can be used by application when a user need to sign into the application, right? So that the service principal can impersonate the signed in user's privilege. Threat actors can abuse this consent grant process by social engineering a user or a set of users and then luring them to grant consent to threat actors malicious application to access the Microsoft 365 data. So these are uh, some of the risks which we felt has high permissions. And if at all you see any of these scopes are granted to a third party application service principle, we strongly recommend you to work with your internal team to understand the necessity of these requirements. For a hunting perspective, you can list out all the service principles and their OAuth permission grants by querying Azure AD tenant configuration. So this script will list out all the OAuth permission grant and the output includes the scope information. And then you can narrow down your hunt to focus on some of the risky scopes. So these are the sequence of events that are recorded whenever a consent is granted to an application, right? So we have given you uh, two snapshots where uh, the first snapshot shows few events when a delegated permissions are granted to an application. The second snapshot shows series of events when an application or delegated permissions are granted to an application. For hunting perspective, again, you can query unified audit log for operations consent to application. So this will list out logs whenever a consent is granted to an application the log output will include scope information. And similarly, you can also query for operations add delegated permission grant. So this will list out all the delegated permissions granted to an application. And this will also include scope information. Operations add service principle. So this will list out whenever a new service principles are registered. So when a new third party application grant are getting a consent from a user, then there will be a new service principle registered in the Azure AD tenant. Operations app role assignment to service principle. So this will list out logs whenever an application permission are granted to applications. So this will also include scope information. So these are the series of event that you need to query in order to hunt this technique. From a defense perspective, you can harden the user settings by restricting users granting consents to third party applications. Let's move to the next technique, abusing SharePoint Online. So SharePoint Online is a web-based application, predominantly used by various organizations in order to promote collaborations and to exchange information with external users as well as throughout the organization. That's a specific 
external sharing setting in sharepoint admin portal that will dictate whether the users can share content to external users or not the most permissive settings in sharepoint admin portal will allow any external users to access the shared content without a requirement of signing into the tenant so from attack perspective uh, threat actors after gaining the sharepoint admin uh, privileges they can tweak the external sharing settings and then they can choose some of the uh, targeted file or the folder and then they can create an anonymous link in order to maintain a persistent access to the file and folder so later it will threat actors can use the anonymous link in order to access the file or the file stored in the folders without a requirement of signing into the tenant so this is a stealthy attack and uh, from a hunting perspective you can start with querying uh, the sharepoint online configurations you can list out what is the uh, the permission settings that you have have configured and the output external user and guest sharing will refer to the most permissive setting and from a hunting perspective you can query unified audit logs where a specific operation called sharing policy change this will list out all the logs whenever a specific permission settings are changed in sharepoint admin portal the uh, the sharing policy changed so this will list out a specific values and when you are seeing extra net with share by link so this will refer to the most permissive setting an anonymous link created anonymous link updated so this will list out whenever a new anonymous links are created or updated anonymous link usage so this specific operation log will list out logs whenever an anonymous links are accessed by external or internal users so these are the series of even that you need to query through unified audit logs in order to hunt this technique let's move to the last technique the interest of time let me move a little bit faster uh maintain persistent access to n365 application so azure application is a software that provides functionality to users and this will be in a form of an application object in azure ad and whenever a new azure application is created there will be a service principle uh, created and registered in the tenant we can assign api permissions to the application object through which the m365 resource can be accessed as well as we can also assign secret to application object or service principles typically we can enforce multi factor authentication to traditional user accounts whereas uh, for the workload identities such as service principles that's cannot perform multi factor authentication and threat actors can abuse this method in order to uh, set a secret or a password to a, a specific application object which has high permissions over m365 resources so we have given a detailed write up late last year and the the white paper was published to virus bulletin and uh, we humbly request you to refer the white paper so from an attack perspective the attackers can add secrets to application objects they can add uh, secrets to service principles this can be achieved through powershell commandlets and uh, once after they set a secret they can log into the tenant and access the m365 resources for a hunting you can query azure ad tenant configuration you can list out all the service principles configured with secrets then you can use the same query in order to uh, list out all the applications uh, configured with secrets and then you can review the output and you can work with your internal team to understand the necessity of the requirement and again for hunting you can query unified audit logs you can look for operations update application certificate and secret management so this will list out logs whenever a secret or certificate are assigned to applications and then you can narrow down your hunt to focus on the key type password let's move to the last section takeaways so we talked about a lot of adversarial techniques uh, in m365 environment so uh, this is a, a mind map that we have created that we have listing all the attributes that you can query through unified audit logs in order to hunt this technique as well as we have also created a, a mind map where we have listed out some of the parameters that you can query through configuration settings in order to identify the misconfigurations as well as to hunt all these adversarial techniques Thanks a lot for listening to our talk. We really appreciate your time.